Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to PACE IT's session on Information Technology Security Measures. Today we're going to be talking about the principle of least privilege, user education, and then some digital security methods that you can implement. And with that, let's begin today's session. We're going to begin with the principle of least privilege. Least privilege is an effective security measure. Unless the top-level administration group is compromised, it is easier to contain a breach. People may get annoyed with the policy of least privilege, as they only have the bare minimum of rights and permissions that are required to do their job. But your job as the administrator is to avoid a creep in privilege escalation. Don't make exceptions unless it is absolutely necessary. Now let's move on to user education. You need to help the end user understand security risks. Because of that, you need to train users on what strong passwords are. You should keep them informed about the principle of least privilege. They need to be aware of malware attacks that are out in the wild and that they may be subject to. Help the user to understand how important it is to keep everything up to date, how to resist social engineering attacks, and what other attack vectors are out there. Your training of the end user can be formal and documented, or it can be informal, you know, just swinging by their office or desk and talking with them. Now let's move on to digital security. We begin talking about digital security with a discussion on antivirus. Antivirus software should be installed, active, and up to date on every machine. If it's not installed, it can't stop a virus. If it's not active, it can't stop a virus. If it's not up to date, it won't recognize a virus. So be sure and use an antivirus on every machine. Now let's move on to anti-spyware. Any spyware is closely related to antivirus. As a matter of fact, a lot of antivirus software packages have anti-spyware built into them. Spyware is malicious code that collects information about a system. It may change some system settings, but what it does is it collects information and then it sends that information off to a remote site. Anti-spyware can prevent that code from running. It can also assess a system and help the user to determine if spyware is present and the level of threat that that spyware represents. A discussion on digital security wouldn't be complete without a discussion on firewalls. Software firewalls should be installed and active on every machine. Firewalls are the traffic cop of network traffic. They control the flow of data into and out of a PC, and they help prevent attacks or to mitigate attacks once they occur by recognizing suspicious activity. Make sure that you use a good quality software firewall on every PC. Digital security also wouldn't be complete without user authentication. There are three main ways to authenticate a user. There's the what you know, username and password, what you have, like a security token, or what you are, biometrics. You can combine these factors to increase your security level. Speaking about authentication, let's talk about passwords. The strongest passwords are random strings of letters, numbers, and symbols, but they're kind of hard to remember. The weakest passwords are whole words, consecutive numbers, or easily guessed passwords, like a birth date or an anniversary. Now there are some methods that you can use to help teach strong password protocol for your user. An example of a protocol that you can use to train users to get strong passwords is the following. So think of a phrase that can be remembered. How about IT security is essential? The first step would be to remove all the spaces. So it'd be IT security is essential. 
then you replace some of the letters with numbers and symbols. And then you can replace some capital and lowercase letters with the opposite. And you end up with a really secure password that is easier to remember than random letters and numbers. So how secure is your system? It all begins with you. Now that concludes this session on IT security measures. We talked about the principle of least privilege. We talked about the importance of user education, and we concluded with some digital security measures. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure we will do some more.